On this week's episode at Nutrition's My Life, we are going to be talking about the other side of nutrition. In the last few episodes, we talked about like our foundation diet, that's our anti-inflammatory diet. And then we talked about thyroid supporting foods are those nutrients that our bodies need if we have a thyroid disorder, even if we don't have a thyroid disorder, <laughs> but it's really important to know, especially if you have a thyroid disorder. And so today we're going to be talking about all the other things, all the other things that help support uh, a healthy thyroid, all the other things that help support a healthy body. And so if this is something that you're excited about, tune in, grab a pen and get some paper and let's get started. So there's a few things I want to talk about today. Um, and the first thing being uh, the habits that we, we do every single day. So that's one of the things that I do with my clients is when we go on a session, I say, okay, from the time you wake up, from the time you go to bed, walk me through your day. I want to know all the habits that you're doing. I want to know all the foods that you're, you're eating. Um, I want to know when the energy is the most, when you're sleeping, like uh, what your sleep schedule is. I want to know uh, everything let's, let's start from, from the beginning. And so that's what we're going to do today is just kind of go through your day. I'm going to help you walk you through your day. So you can visualize those habits because the, the reason why we need to do this, and I should specify this a little bit more. The reason why we need to do this is that many thyroid warriors are stuck in their fight or flight response. Many health warriors are stuck in their fight or flight response. So what does that mean? Well, we have a um, two kinds of nervous systems, our sympathetic nervous system and our parasympathetic nervous system. We want our bodies to be able to digest food properly. We want our bodies to be able to have our immune system working properly, have all the hormones go where they need to be going. Um, we want our blood sugars to work well. We want to sleep good, right? All these things are important when we're in our rest and digest nervous system. And so what all of these things are going to help us do is make sure we're not just having expensive poop. And what do I mean about expensive poop is that if you're not in that right environment, you're not going to heal. And so think about a flower. So if a flower does not bloom, are we going to blame the flower? Are we going to look at the environment? Are we going to check the soil? Are we going to look at the air quality? Are we going to check to see if it's near sunlight? Right. So sometimes what we say is like, okay, maybe we're overwatering, we're underwatering. We added too many um, things to it. So we look at the environment. And so what what do we do as health warriors? Gosh, man, I, we beat ourselves up. I did something wrong. It was me. It was all everything. And so that is one of the things that looking at these habits are going to help you kind of give yourself some more grace and say, Hey, like I'm doing a lot of the right things here. I just need a little bit more help in, in, in other places. And yesterday I explained it to one of my clients as, um, you know, you, she was like, you know, I feel like I've, I've tried really hard and I've done really, you know, I've done all these things. And I still, you know, that's why I, you know, she came to me. She's like, I, I've done everything. I don't know what's going on. Well, the way I described it, I was like, you probably are doing a lot of the right things, right? You have that, um, think of your body as, as like a puzzle piece, as a puzzle. And you've maybe put all the border around your puzzle together with everything that you're doing. But now what we have to do is fill in all the other pieces. And this is what we're here for, right? So you've got the basics down. We've got um, all the, the major tools down. Now we need the supporting uh, tools, the supporting habits, those other side of nutrition to actually help that nutrition work really well for you to help your body recover, repair, heal, um, feel good. Don't feel so tired. And so let's go over our, our, um, our habits and, um, hopefully you guys can start to say like, Oh, I, I'm so close. I'm just doing a few things that I can, I can like, um, enhance, or I can, I can, you know, tweak real, real quick and, and get to where I need to be. So if you are um, just like starting your day and let's say I've had so many people say, when I ask them, like, how's your stress level? They're like, I'm okay. I'm not bad. I'm, I'm doing pretty good. I think we all have stress, but I'm, I'm handling mine pretty good. And then as we go into our, um, as I'm going into like the, okay, tell me what's going on in your day. Um, they were like, I rush out the door. And so I hear that word. I'm like, rush. Okay. Cortisol spike. Right. And I hear all of these. Yeah. And I got, get overwhelmed with stuff. And so if you're using those words that are alternative to stress, you have some stress in your life. And then we all do. Right. But we want to be in that state of, I, I will, we will wobble, but I won't fall down. 
we, we want to weevil wobble and not fall down um, because stress is always going to be there. So let's start to do things that are going to be, um, you know, kind of be, get ahead of the game a little bit. We're going to kind of try to be ahead of it a little bit. And so, um, and then we're going to talk about things to do when, when stress is there. So instead of rushing out the door, right? So you're grabbing whatever you can to, to, to eat and you're like, all right, I'm just going to eat on the, on the way to work. I'm going to grab something real quick when I drop the kids off or, I'm, you know, or maybe you just drink coffee in the morning and that's it. Well, what's happening in your day when you just rush into it like that is that you're setting the tone for more stress right for for like basically if you think about like you when something happens that's stressful you can like kind of determine it as um, I start my day off at a level 10 um, as far as I feel good my energy goes but if stress is happening you're rushing out the door you've already dropped your, your level down to like an eight and then something else happens throughout the day and you go down to like a seven or a six and eventually you finally like crash and burn by the end of the day. And we're like, why is this happening? Well, part of the reason why is that we, we didn't set the tone, right? We, we kind of were setting the tone of like, Hey, I'm going to be rushed. I'm going to have a lot of issues. I'm going to be, um, go, go, go. And so some of the things that we can do is plan ahead. And I know that's like, so like, yes, it's way easier said than done, Nicole. Um, no joke. I I've thought about that before, but what if we started realizing that just like, one minute of like planning saves five minutes later. And by doing a few of these little things like beforehand, it opens up so many other opportunities for you to have more time to do something else for yourself later on. And so that can be something as simple as meal prepping your breakfast. And it doesn't have to be super complicated, right? Um, I can dive more into meal prepping and, and I have on my, on my podcast before, but this is something that maybe you just get some mason jars and you make some oatmeal parfaits or some yogurt parfait. So everything's already in the fridge. It took you five minutes to put together, right? And then all you have to do is in the morning is just grab that. So you're not rushed making your breakfast. Another thing that most people tend to, to do um, is, is miss that morning sun. And the reason why this morning sun is so crucial, so crucial when it comes to being a health warrior is because of the, the there's a few, few, few reasons. <laughs> there's a few reasons. One of them um, is that it can actually help out with any anxiety or depression. Uh, studies show about 15 minutes a day, um, 20 minutes a day ish, uh, can be uh, that sunlight into your eyes, um, can be super helpful for reducing someone's anxiety and just kind of allowing that person to, to be themselves, um, about 30 minutes a day of, of sunlight into those eyes for depression. And so that helps out with, right. With helping our, our, um, get us getting out of that fight or flight response and just being better. <laughs> also some of those UV rays that we're getting actually increase the blood, um, endorphins in your, in your body. So you start getting those feel good, uh, opiates, those, those hormones that make you feel good just from sunshine alone. Um, but the cool, the cool thing about guys, the cool thing about the, uh, about morning sun is that it can help release melatonin 18 hours later. I know. I think that right there, when I learned that, I was like, that is the coolest thing. Morning sun helps you sleep better. Um, but it does, it helps out with your circadian rhythm when you get that morning sun, because if you think about it, like how were we, when we were like, when we weren't living in houses, right. That morning sun was what woke us up or even without alarms, I guess I should say that morning sun was always what woke us up. Um, and so that's how our, we're, we're designed. That's how our bodies are, are made to actually wake up with the sun and go down with the, with the sun or go to sleep with the sun. And so this is where we want to start, start doing is getting some sort of um, either outdoor morning time, or we're going to um, get a mood lamp, or we're going to sit and drink um, our coffee or our turmeric latte next to the, um, the window, or we're going to do some stretches, or we're just going to open up the door, which I've done multiple times. And I just would stand in front of like, it's outside the door frame um, or in the door frame and just stand there with my turmeric latte and just stand there as long as I could practicing my gratitude, being like, wow, I am so grateful. I can hear these, these birds. I can, I'm so grateful. I can see the trees. I can so grateful. I can hear, um, the wind blowing through the leaves. And what that does is that brings me back into that present moment. It allows me to, um, really like tackle that anxiety at a later time. Right. It brings me back in there when we're in that moment, 
our bodies are able to function properly. If we're an anxious little being here, <laughs> worrying about what happened yesterday, worrying about your to-do list, um, what's going to happen is that's going to have uh, detrimental effects, you know, not, not immediate always. Sometimes it results in like, you know, you have to go, oh, oh I have to go to the bathroom real quick. But sometimes being that anxious can definitely have long-term effects of gut issues, of insulin um, resistance issues because of that cortisol. So there are issues with, when that, that happens. So this is why it's so important to, to really then just tackle our day um, and look at it. And so I like to look at it in like a morning routine, a day routine, an evening routine. And by doing that, I can block it down and say, hey, in the morning, all I have to do is get some outdoor time or some morning sun. Um, I can practice my gratitude. I'm gonna set the tone for the day. And then what we're gonna do is all throughout the day, this is where we go into that if, you know, instead of the, um, getting ahead of the game, we're going to be doing, oh crap, <laughs> when I'm feeling like this, this is what, this is what we're going to be doing. Um, so I want you to visualize a flame and I call this your stress flame. So some people, I call it their anxiety flame, but just think about it. No, no matter what's going on, um, you just feel like, oh my gosh, you feel like something's kind of bubbling and, and turning in your, your, your chest, your, your chest feels full, right? Um, that that's you rushing out the door. Oof, stress flame. That's you working at your desk all the day, um, all day long. Stress flame. That's you um, sending an email that makes you really nervous. <laughs> like, oh, how are they going to receive this? Stress flame. That's when you're running late to something because you were searching on, um, looking on TikTok, and now you're late to pick up someone. Stress flame. Whatever it may be, we have to visualize that as a stress flame because if we do not put that stress flame out it's going to eventually take over. Right. And if that takes over, that's when, um, we, I used to call it mean mom. That's when I was like, yell at the kids, um, and just get angry for no reason. Um, back in the day when I was really bad and not practicing what, and a, lot, a lot of the things that I know now, um, I kicked a hole in, um, in the, the bedroom closet door because that's how bad I was. I was having panic attacks. I was having all sorts of emotional dysregulation. And a lot of it was because of my thyroid, but a lot of it was a time, another time. I just didn't know the tools to be able to handle uh, my emotions and everything that was going on. Um, I saw, sought out a therapist and I learned a lot of tools. And over the years, I am a big advocate of therapy because it has helped me get to a better version of myself. Um, and so what we're doing is, is, is tackling that stress flame so that way we can put it out, kind of re think about it like recalibrating you, getting you back down to baseline. Um, and this is going to be super helpful, especially if you have digestive issues, this is going to be really helpful. Um, if you have that cortisol, um, cortisol dysfunction, and a lot of people will, um, get tested for that cortisol dysfunction. Some people call it adrenal fatigue, but think of it like this, that, um, cortisol is what normally, um, I said the sun earlier, it was what wakes us up, but, um, cortisol actually helps wake us up in the morning. And so it should be higher in the morning than it is in the evening. But what I see with many, many clients is that it's the opposite. It is the lowest in the morning and it's the highest in the evening. And the reason why this is a uh, issue is you have trouble sleeping when it's like that, right? And then you're exhausted all day long because of that. And so what we're gonna try to do is, is really focus in our sleep. And so that's why that morning routine is important, right? Getting that morning sun. That's why doing those things along the day are gonna help out with reducing stress. I mean, I had someone message me not too long ago um, saying that um, one of my, my clients, and she was saying that she ended up listening to all my podcasts, taking lots of notes. And I am, I think it was one of my clients. It might've been just a follower. I don't know. <laughs> I get messages all the time and I've heard they, they all go um, into one either way. Um, she ended up um, doing some of the hard work, writing letters to her family members. And this is something that I um, would have some of my clients that are really having an emotional time, um, write a letter to someone who who you feel like has, has done you wrong or that you have a hard time with. Um, and then what you do is that you don't send it to them. You release it because that's that simple fact of putting that pen 
to the paper, it's transferring that, that negative energy. And you could even take it a step further and like burn that shit and like have a little ceremony about it and really, really release it. But a lot of times what we do is we have all of this like built in stuff that we just haven't dealt with. Um, and that's why like way, way back in the day, I, I mean, I, I always struggle with sleep. Anxiety has been my, my best friend for the longest time since I was a very little child. So my therapist thinks I might be ADHD because of all of that. Um, but that's one of those things that I have struggled with majority of my life. Like, like I don't sleep past eight hours. Like I'm lucky to sleep, um, over, <laughs> over eight hours if that happens. Um, so I will be the first person up in the morning, but I will also be the last person falling asleep because my mind will just race and race and race and race. And so something as simple as writing out whatever it is, you don't have to do like something crazy journaling. Like, and I know because y'all, I, I am not the best journal, <laughs> like I journaler, I can't, I don't journal well at all. Um, so I've made it work for me, right? I don't put the pressure on myself to like be perfect and have to write this like, like big old thing. I write down sometimes like that pissed me off or X, Y, Z, you know, just a couple sentences, but what actually mostly helps me fall asleep is that being in that present moment. So what I like to do is kind of like man manifesting, actually it really is manifesting. Um, so if you're not into that woo woo stuff, like, sorry, but here we are. Um, so what we can do is, um, is just say, I am so happy and grateful now that. So what we're doing, what I'm saying, I'm so happy and grateful now. So you're gonna be bringing whatever it is that you want into this present moment, but you're not gonna say, I can't wait until this happens because then you're just going to keep waiting and waiting and waiting. But what we can say is I'm so happy and grateful that sleep comes to me with ease. I'm so happy and grateful that I'm falling asleep and it's, it's so nice. Right. And so you just write that and you just write that and you're just like, Oh, Oh, and then psh, you're out. <laughs> um, and this is why we're not doing on our phones. We're not doing all of that. So honestly, just looking at your habits. Um, if y'all are watching me on YouTube or you're watching me on um, TikTok as I'm recording this, you'll see that my, you'll see some like blue reflections in my glasses because my, prescri my prescription glasses have um, blue light canceling built into them. And that's a major thing for so many people. What do they do? get on TikTok, they are scrolling through, or we're watching a movie and we're just getting all that stimulations. And remember how we were talking about how our bodies like to go to bed when the sun goes down? Well, you're tricking your mind. And now our body isn't releasing melatonin. Melatonin is released when it's dark out. Um, and so we're having all this blue light illuminating and hitting us. It's going to be a really hard time to fall asleep. Um, and if you do fall asleep, you might, you might notice that you wake up easier. And that happens frequently with my cortisol dysfunction, um, blood sugar issue people, but that's another, we can talk more sleep here um, on another episode. Another thing, another side of nutrition that most people end up missing is being outside. Y'all don't underestimate the power of nature. <laughs> don't underestimate it. Um, so how many times did you like go on vacation outdoor someplace and you're just like, oh my gosh, this was amazing. I enjoyed it. Um, and you just feel so relaxed. This is why part of my therapy for myself is pulling weeds. It's raking the leaves. It's gardening. Um, when I get your hand, when I get my hands into that nature, into soil, like it just like brings me all this like amazing, amazing feeling. So when, you know, the hippies hugging trees type of thing back in the day, there was some science to them. <laughs> there was some reason to their madness, right? And so if we're trying to, um, if you're looking at your day and you're like, why am I not losing the weight? Why am I not, um, why are my labs still all out of whack? Why am I so exhausted all the time? Well, what are your daily habits showing you? Are you sedentary most of the time? You might be like, well, I worked out in the morning, but then you're sedentary for the rest of your day. Maybe you um, like, okay, Nicole, I don't have time to, to go outside. My schedule is so crazy. I don't have time. Well, then bring the outdoors in. There's grounding mats. There's um, I'm sure y'all are familiar with like that sand, that like that calming little stick that you do and just do, you know, that repetition mo motion. Um, you can 
find a succulent, grow some herbs, do something. Um, but what we're trying to do is counteract all of this electricity that we're going on inside of us, but it's honestly going to really, really benefit you with helping out with um, just kind of regulating your, your nervous system. And that's really what, what the other side of nutrition is about is um, making sure and kind of being in check with your, your body and being say, like, Hey, like I'm not feeling right. Why am I not feeling right? Um, earlier I was like, dude, I am like just getting really exhausted. And I was like, Oh, Oh, the reason why I'm feeling like this. And this is a great, like little, like little lesson here always reflect, right? Always reflect. And so I was like running around doing some errands and I was like, why am I feeling like this? And I was like, oh, well, Nicole, you didn't eat all the full, the full snack that you brought because I brought, <laughs> I brought a snack that, that was super chocolatey. It was a protein bar and I just, I couldn't tolerate it. So I only had my apple and if y'all have ever listened to me, you know that I always encourage a protein or a fat with um, a carb. So that apple didn't fill me up for very long. Um, and so I was just starting to, to crash. And so, um, you know, yeah, I thought I'd planned well, but I couldn't, I couldn't tolerate that, <laughs> that, that sugar. It was way too chocolatey. Um, and so doing little, little check-ins with yourself like that. Okay. So why am I feeling this way? Uh, was it, was it because of something I ate or I didn't put something in my food? Did I do this because I've been sitting at my desk? Did I not get that morning sun? Did I do all these things? Right. Um, so this is the time to actually start going, um, and reflecting. And the last thing I want to talk about is going into a little bit more of that movement, but also exercise. So one of the things that um, we, we, we fail to do a lot of times is just like, well, I'm active. I'm cleaning my house. My job requires me to stand up a lot and all of this, right? And in yes, that's great. We do want that movement. We do, 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 do want that movement. And I want it to happen. I want you to stretch throughout the day. I want you to feel good. I want that all happening. Stretching throughout the day. I encourage so many of my clients, I would say about 70, 75% of my clients in their health plan, it says, and I hope you're stretching uh, more throughout the day, depending on their stress level, because we think about if we get stressed more often, what happens with movement is that helps um, get that lactic acid out of the body. And we're like, clinical lactic acid stress. I, I missed a step when I said that <laughs> cortisol, when it's broken down is broken down into lactic acid. And so that's why when we feel tense in our shoulders and tight and everything, um, it's because of cortisol. And so what we're trying to do is get that cortisol out of us, get that lactic acid out of us, shake it off, jump up and down, do, do put some music on, have a, a great dance party. We're going to have some of those music all throughout the day. That's great for stress reduction. That's just great for stress prevention, but we still have to um, have those intentional exercises or those intentional movements. And so depending on your health status, some people can go and have a good workout and feel really good. Some people can only tolerate like yoga. And I'm going to share with you like one of the most mind blowing stories that I've had in such a long time. And I, I'm so proud of her. So if you are listening to me, this is like, just I'm proud of you. And <laughs> I know I've said it many times, um, but I had a client guys get this. This is like the crazy, crazy stuff. And I, and I've said it on TikTok a few times, but I just, it still blows my mind. So her goal is eventually to have some weight loss. Right. And I'm all supportive of the weight loss goals, but I'm also realistic with my clients and say, Hey, you're not at a state yet where we can achieve weight loss. We need to kind of get your body back into homeostasis bring it back into so it can start repairing itself. And then we'll touch base on, on that weight loss. And so this certain client was working out twice a day, um, heavy weight lifting in the morning and more just walking in the evening, which is fantastic. Um, and so I had to tell her, Hey, you know, we're, we're going to include more food, which is hard for someone who's trying to lose weight, right? They're like, you're making me eat more so I can weigh less. This is, this is nerve wracking. And I, and I get that. I totally get it. But luckily she trusted the process. Um, and she met her nutrient demands. Uh, so she was able to reduce inflammation, but the crazy, crazy part was that her body was in such a state of stress and inflammation, um, that she didn't realize how much of the weight and like the way her body looked was 
from stress and inflammation. And so she was like, you know, I went two weeks without weighing myself and I was kind of bummed because I only lost a pound. I'm like, Hey, well, a pound is great. And she was like, you want to know it's actually great is, um, I, I took before and after pictures, um, or like progress pictures. So, and this is, this is again, why I hate the scale. This is why it's always great. Do those pictures, do measurements, see how your clothes fit, right? Use those instead. Um, have those like non-scale victories because the pictures that she took, she did like the side, the side one. So you could see kind of what's going on. She, no joke, looked like she had lost like 20 to 30 pounds, 20 to 30 pounds. It was insane. Like in her face, in her arms, in her um, stomach. And she had only lost a pound on the scale, but in just those two weeks, her body received what it needed. It reduced inflammation it let go of probably some, um, fluid retention and she is looking phenomenal. Um, so I know weight loss is still something with her, but I'm like, dude, like, like you might not want to like change the weight at all. Just keep doing what you're doing. And your body's just going to kind of readjust itself and move things around. And you're like, and that's the crazy thing too, is that like our scales and our bodies like change through so much throughout our lives that like, if we kind of want to say like, I want to weigh the, the same weight that I was when I was in college or when I um, graduated from high school or whatever it is, you know, or pre baby weight, our body composition changes so much. So just know that the scale is not it. So that's another other side of nutrition that we have to, to be aware of are those non-scale victories. The, I have more energy. I was able to go outside and play with the kids. I was able to go and um, take the dogs for a walk. I've heard that multiple times or man, I was able to take the dogs for a lot longer walk than I normally have. Um, I've heard my rings are fitting. My shoes are fitting. I've heard um, I fit into some shorts. I accidentally bought and now they, they, they fit amazing. Um, and these are all those non-scale victories that were, were really wanting, um, right. I'm sleeping better. Um, my stomach's not hurting me when I, when I wake up all those, those things, celebrate them, get excited about them. All right, y'all, this is what I have today for today's episode here at nutrition's my life. So I hope you really enjoyed it. And if you do subscribe, follow, share, let me know that you're enjoying this so I can continue to provide, um, beneficial tools for you. So you can start being that version of yourself that you enjoy. So until next week, y'all take care.